Washington, Ms. Delvaney. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I wish I could say I'm surprised that this committee's first order of business after this August break is to launch yet another attack on women's health, but I'm not. Already this year, the House has voted to restrict reproductive health care in private insurance, to enact a sweeping 20-week abortion ban, and to allow employers to discriminate against their workers for using birth control. And now we're conducting a so-called investigation that's rooted in extreme anti-choice ideology rather than evidence and facts. It's shameful that this committee is legitimizing the extremists whose only real intent is to intimidate women and their health care providers and to shutter Planned Parenthood clinics in communities across the country. Um, in my state of Washington, we are already seeing the consequences of these irresponsible, baseless attacks. Last Friday, one of our Planned Parenthood clinics was the victim of arson, a senseless act of violence. It's past time for Congress to stop focusing on ideology and start focusing on the facts. And the fact is that defunding Planned Parenthood would have a devastating impact on women's access to care. That care includes well women visits, cancer screenings, immunizations, birth control. In fact, more than 90% of the services provided by Planned Parenthood are preventative. We cannot allow the reckless attack actions of a few extremists to jeopardize the critical safety net provided by Planned Parenthood. And with that, um, Mr. Chair, I'd like to submit for the record a letter from 92 organizations, including the National Women's Law Center, um, expressing their support for Planned Parenthood. Without objection, it will be made a part of the record. Thank you. Um, Professor Smith, um, we were just talking about comments that some of my colleagues have made that community health centers would be able to fill the void if Planned Parenthood was defunded. Um, is, I'd love to get your opinion on that. Um, is it your understanding that some Americans would be left without access to preventative health services if they were no longer funded and those services were no longer available? That's right. I, I, I don't know the details. I haven't studied all the uh, areas that are without community health centers, but I know that there are many places that, that simply don't have access to them. I also question uh, the level of services that's, that are provided in some of those centers as well. And Planned Parenthood remains the only option for many people uh, to obtain these services. That's definitely true. Can I correct the record with one uh, point also while, while Certainly. you have me? Which is um, something that Mr. Labrador said, uh, that people like Ms. Smith encourage people to have abortions. And I, I just want to correct the record and say I've never encouraged someone to have an abortion. I've talked to some women who are friends who've been considering abortion and they've discussed their options with me, but I would never encourage someone or push anyone to have an abortion, and I wanted to just have make that clear in the record. I understand. Um, I just want to highlight, in my state of Washington, um, Planned Parenthood has uh, almost 120, this is actually 2013 numbers, almost 120,000 patients, um, over 17,000 folks who've gone in for pap tests, over 17,000 who's gone, gone in for breast exams. So we are talking about preventative services that are so critical. And a huge number of them, yes. And are, in your opinion, are there particular um, groups that would be impacted more significantly if Planned Parenthood services weren't, preventative services were no longer available? Absolutely, women who don't have insurance, low-income women in particular, uh, women of color uh, in communities which don't have access to high-quality services and don't have health insurance despite the Affordable Care Act and the, all the gains that we have made there. And, you know, as we talk about some of the attacks, um, you know, that we have seen uh, against Planned Parenthood, you talked about this in your testimony. There's a history of this. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Yes, there's a, there have been nine different um, uh, similar kinds of smear campaigns just since 2000 using these kinds of videos, accusing Planned Parenthood of everything from um, hiding statutory rape uh, to, I, I, I forget all the different ones, there have been a number of them and Mr. Boff was asked about them previously as well. Um, and that certainly has gone on every time there's been a full investigation, uh, there's a huge hue and cry about it, it gets in the press, everyone goes crazy, congressional hearings are held, things are investigated, and the claims are debunked. It's happened again and again and again, and I predict, I will predict, that that will happen again this time. Thank you, it's unfortunate that it is happening right now. Um, thank you, and thank you. I um, yield back the remainder of my time, Mr. Chair. 
Uh, the chair recognizes the gentleman from Michigan, Mr. Bishop, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair, um, and thank you to uh, those of you who have shown up to uh, testify today. Thank you for 